and we are turning our attention back to the Premier League action over the course of the last couple of days. Mark Lawrenson, good morning to you. Morning. Uh, let's start with Saturday evening, Manchester United hammering Tottenham Hotspur. The crisis at Old Trafford is over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's why, uh, listen, they've got Man City next weekend, haven't they, and Atalanta midweek, mm. but they were better. Um, <clears throat> obviously, they played with the kind of three-stroke, five at the back. There was far better commitment. They got kind of behind the ball as well when they lost it. I thought, obviously, playing two up front was good for them as well with Ronaldo apart, had a partner with him. And obviously that that worked brilliantly for them. And you could just see there was there was a difference about them. But you know what? They shouldn't have had to be, should they? Because the players, the players at this level, that's how they should be week in, week out. Do you like that shape, Mark? Do you think they should proceed with it over the next little while? Well, they didn't concede, which is which is a bonus. So that that will build the confidence up. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any great problem with that whatsoever. I think, you know, the three cent- central defenders understood the the, the roles. The, you know, I mean, Maguire can come out and play, which he tried to do. Varane came out and played a little bit as well into the midfield. So yeah, I, I, I think I think for for the players that they've got, that is probably the best system. The other thing as well is that they put the foot in on Saturday night, you know, both obviously Fred and McTominay, they, they, they put the foot in and they, and they made some tackles. And also with that, when you get an extra man there in, in Fernandez in midfield, an extra body, it's far more difficult for the, for the opposition team. But it, it's strange that it's taken a 5 nil whopping to suddenly realise that actually this, this is the best way that they should play. Isn't it incredible? And also it's taken multiple transfer windows where they have signed players who aren't suited to the system. Like you can throw yeah. Donny van der Beek in there, you can definitely throw Jadon Sancho into the exact type of player who would not play well in the system. Who, who There simply is not a position for a, a right winger or somebody who plays on the right of a front three in this system. So it's extraordinary no. that this is the sort of lack of planning or, or lack of thinking that's gone on around the club. Well, yeah, especially when, I mean, I'm not quite sure how long Ollie's been there, but he's been there for quite a few transfer windows. And mm. the basic idea of the manager is, is to build the team. And when you build the team, you, you build it in a certain way where you know you want to play. And, um, you know, you don't necessarily get all the best players, but you get players who, who can play in the system and do a really, really good job for you. So, I mean, you know, the, the young lads, the likes of Rashford and Green, who look, looking at the weekend thinking, crikey, we, we, not, we might not be getting in this team. You know what? N- n- never a bad thing, because if and when they do, if, if somebody get Cavani gets injured or something, or, or Ronaldo then obviously they've got to come in and prove that they're worth a place. But I think they've now got a little bit of a competition for places. They, in fairness to Oli, last week, obviously, um, he must have, after Sunday, must have worked hard with them. And this was the shape. They've probably been working on it all week. And it worked. The, the only problem is Tottenham were woeful. And they really seriously were woeful. To, to, on, on that mark, like, can, you, can you kind of imagine yourself as a player, if you were... If you were playing nowadays, you're playing in an amazing stadium against Manchester United. Great atmosphere in the place when you're going well. Um, you know, you're playing for a club that looks after you, pays you very well. You're mm. playing for a manager who, by all accounts, is a good man. And you pr- you produce a performance like that. I mean, how, how can... Because th- th- these players surely haven't become, um, you know, bad people overnight. How is this happening? Well, Kane doesn't look like he's enjoying himself, does he? That, that, that's the first thing. You worked hard enough. But you can just almost see in his body language at times, it, it, which is, I should have gone to Manchester City, which I think will probably happen now, <clears throat> excuse me, in January. It's affected Son as well, because Son is a real, real top player. He doesn't quite look the same. And I thought Lucas Moura was the only one who looked like he was capable of, of, of doing anything at the weekend, and they took him off. Um, and a lot of the other players just look like 95ers. They just look very, fairly ordinary players. So... That's that's obviously a massive problem for Tottenham. They're going to have a, a, a rethink. I mean, it sounds with the noises coming out of uh, of Tottenham that Nuno might be gone within the next few days. Well, I mean, what a sad and sorry state of affairs that is. When you say nine to fivers, you kind of mean like clocking in, clocking out, doing basically turning up and doing no more. Well, not no, as in just just you know, the, 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 just like normal players. There's nothing exactly special about them. You know, we we know, the goalkeeper's not been good for eighteen months, two years. I can't for the life of me remember how many times he changed the, the players at the back, whether the centre backs or whether the full backs. Um, 
and they just look like they've got an ordinary team. But it's not an ordinary team if Son and Kane are firing. You know, it's that it then becomes a good team. But, but they're not. Yeah. And um, when you when you say that about Kane as well, Mark, because um, just Owen was speculating before the show that uh, you know would Manchester City sign a player who looks like he's down tools? But like, do you think his te- his his uh, legacy is now tainted at Spurs if, if this goes on no. much further? No. 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 I think I think he's a top top player who's just got a bit of a monk on at the moment with the club because because they wouldn't let him go. So no, I think he's a, I think it really is a top player. Listen, for all we know, he might be thinking. Don't get injured till January the first, and then I can go. Look, you, you don't you don't know with these lads, but I think he's, he seems to be a really honest guy. Um, his work his work ethic. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, he's trying very very hard. He hardly had any chances. Let's put it that way. That's the first thing. The service the service was really really poor. Um, but you can just almost see in his body language. It's like mm, nice stadium, but what am I doing here? Can that change at any point during the season? Like in terms of your stance, there that he's got enough credit in the bank to either a earn a big move or, or b not have his legacy tarnished. If this continues as the season goes on, or the body language continues to be poor, is there a chance that Manchester City turn around and say, "Listen, not sure if this guy is worth whatever it's going to be in January, 120 million pounds." Well, uh, maybe that's what they're hoping. No, but maybe the, what they're hoping is it's not 120 million; it's gone down to 100. So mm. save the 20 big ones. Um, Look, you know, he's he's a top player. So, yes, they wanted him. I I can't believe that they never took him, which is very, very strange for me. And then one or two people now saying, well, they weren't that interested in him. I'm I'm not sure that was true. I think that's all part of the the politics of trying to get the price down. But, no, I think if, if, you know, Tottenham said on the 1st of January, opening the transfer window, that it was available for sale, I think... This time there'd be more than one. I think they want two or even three teams maybe want to take him. On the Nuno front, then, I mean, it's a awful situation for them to be in if they have to sack this guy, considering they went through how many managers before actually arriving on this guy. It's not exactly yeah. like the managerial roundabout has got filled up with other candidates. Antonio Conte's name seems to be linked with him. But they kind of did the groundwork during the summer, Mark, in terms of finding a new manager, and they ended up with this guy. Now they've got to do the groundwork all over again. Are they really going to find a better manager? Well, who's, who knows? They're now saying uh, Fonseca, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> it was, I think he was close at the time, so they'll know his thoughts. They'll know what you know, what and how he wants to play. So that's, that's a probably... A bonus them, and I think the fact that that Nuno A was didn't cost them any money, and I think I'm right in saying he's has he got two years contract. Yeah, and I, there's there was some report as well that they can get rid of him uh, without a massive payoff as well. I'm not sure when that can happen. I'm not sure if it's now or if it's in the middle of the season or the end well, of the season, but it won't be I'll too damaging. I'll tell you what that will be. I'll tell you what that will be. That that will be that um, if he's not if he if the team don't. Um, Qualify for the Champions League. That would be a big thing in terms of his bonus. Well, yeah. if he if he goes if he goes today, he's not qualifying for the Champions League because it's impossible at the moment because he's still got games to play. So that that wouldn't surprise me. Um, Chief Exec at Tottenham is, is is a very wily so and so, and he knows what he's doing. But in terms of this appointment, and it's not working out for them. And the problem is as well is, is that that once people well, you heard it, you heard it, didn't you? In, in terms of the crowd. I mean, and, and a lot of them cleared off anyway, way, way before the end. And I just don't think it looks good for him. I don't know how he's really going to survive, to be honest with you. But he, he is he is one of the good guys. It was a pretty extraordinary weekend in the Premier League elsewhere, Mark. Saturday, uh, 3 o'clock kickoffs, Manchester City getting beaten at home, Liverpool dropping points at home to Brighton. This was not yeah. an outcome anybody would have seen after the first 10, 15 minutes at Anfield on Saturday. What changed? What what did Brighton bring to proceedings that that rattled Liverpool after they went two 0 up? Well, they were always a threat. I think I think that's the first thing. And and what what you carry that threat, obviously, it also gives you a little bit of thinking. Well, you know, we can we can pinch a goal here or whatever. I think Liverpool were just they were just off. Um, it happens. And do you know what? Quite often it happens after you've had you know some outstanding results. And of course, you know what it's like in this game at the moment that. Um, you know, you go you go to Man United and you win five 0 and everything's absolutely brilliant. And then the next the next game, you get a little bit of a not quite the performance that you wanted. And normally with Liverpool, even when they have that, you know, they have the ability to to win the game. I mean, obviously the Mane 
VAR goal was was a big thing because if that had been awarded, that was good night. That was ending up four or five, wasn't it? You know, which the fine lines there are. And I think Graham Potter actually said that the Brighton manager, they just they they just weren't at it. And I think that's what Clark will have said to them that look, you know, every every week you try to be nine out of ten, and occasionally when you're eight or seven, that's when you've really got to hanker down and 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 basically you know win the game by hook or by crook, and that just wasn't there. At the weekend, Brighton, Brighton played well. I mean, you know, in the City game, I mean, it was amazing. And when, when I heard it was 1-0 to Palace quite early on, I thought, well, well, they'll be back and they'll win three, four, or even five. And they just probably weren't. They're, they're another one that quite weren't at the races after, you know, brilliant performances in Europe as well. What do you make of Potter, actually? Because, um, like... The, the performance Brighton basically went at Liverpool from the get go. They 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 had a chance after about a minute, a really really good chance, but actually possibly the best chance of any anyone had in the whole game. They were toe to toe. Second half, Laura, I thought they looked actually the better side, and and Klopp spoke yes. about. But like, do, does he emerge as a coach now that other teams will look at and say, actually, you know, the the real the, the narrative around who replaces Solskjaer isn't going to go away. Obviously, Spurs are looking for a manager. Are there managers from you know? within England that can go on to better things because um, he just hasn't played in such a, a lovely brand of football as well. Yeah, look, he's, you know, season by season, he, he's, 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 he got better. His teams have got better. Um, and you look at the moment, you say they're doing a really, really good job. But are you are you seriously saying that are, are one of the top four or one of the supposed top six, are they looking at him as manager? Possibly. Do I think it's a little bit early? Yep. I think if they have a if they think if they have a really good season and, and manage to nick a, a top ten place, then I think people will seriously look look at him. I mean, I know all about Brighton. Now we've had four years there, and and they're a fantastically run club. I mean, the owner T- Tony Bloom, he, they don't owe owe anybody any money. He's you know built the stadium, he's built a brand new training ground. It's all good. They can attract players. Um, the recruitment's good. You know, you sell white for fifty million, and you bring two or three players in, which obviously makes makes uh, economic sense, certainly. So, and the way he plays is good, but it's it's just a little bit early. I think we're always just, a, you know, it's like anything. We're all everybody overreacts in the Premier League at the moment because it is the best league in the world, but it's almost it's almost so so Liverpool only draw and they're going, oh, what's you know what's happened to Liverpool? You know, they beat Man United next week. Well, it's just the way the Premier League is. Mm. Um, so he's got a chance and he's improving and that's all that he can do is improve the team every single year and I mean the great problem last year was that they'd take the lead couldn't get a second goal or this year I mean obviously even now they've they've only scored 11 in 10 anyway but but they've stopped conceding and what they have now is they don't need that many chances actually to win a game which you think about it is is not, not a bad way to play yeah, it's, it's been a complete 180. This time last year, they were creating loads of yeah. chances, couldn't get points on the board, and now it seems that they're overachieving as opposed to their chances, which is, as you say, a sign of how clinical they are. Like, just on mm. that, that theme, and like across Saturday, like you mentioned the City result, the, the, the incredible thing about what Brighton and Palace did on Saturday was that this wasn't like uh, Sam Allardyce's West Brom getting something off yeah. Klopp at, at Christmas. This, this was really well thought out, methodical. If you like XG, they bought one on XG as well as on, on the scoreline. So has there been a shift, Mark, around those mid-table sides where it's like, OK, parking the bus and trying to nick a 1-0 win just is not going to wash against these big teams anymore? Well, you know what? You know what it is? I think, I think the longer you're in the Premier League, you can, you can buy better players. Because you know the money gets better, better and better, and that and that's what it is. I mean, what it what it has done all this money now is is it, it's made a lot of those teams basically just in, into into better teams because they can attract, as I said, they can attract better players. I mean, <laughs> I did a, I did an interview with <clears throat> excuse me the local Brian, uh, Brighton paper on Thursday last, and I said it it would be football in suicide if Brighton took on Liverpool at Anfield. So it tells you what I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> At least you I've been reminded though, on anyway. Twitter, but I've, I've been reminded on Twitter by about seventy-two thousand people. So, far. <laughs> yeah. In fairness, though, like to, to give yourself some kudos there, um, you you may not have for, for I, I guess forecast how the game developed and mm. how. Liverpool looked so open straight away. Like Fabinho's loss was just, it was so apparent. Keita obviously went off injured. So they have a major hole in the defensive sort of midfield position. And like, do you see that 
do you see that defence as solid as it once was? And 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 I, I guess the question the Liverpool fans might be a small bit afraid to ask is: Is Van Dijk quite as good as he was pre-injury? Or like, well, it did surprise me that like Brighton to win at Liverpool on XG at Anfield with Liverpool's front three in the form they're in is fairly staggering. Is it? Yeah. Well, um, you know, Virgil's not. He's not quite at it. But you know, when I say he's not quite at it, he's not world class every week. He's had a um, couple of iffy days. Um, and he's obviously got new partners as well, which probably doesn't help. So no, they don't. They, they don't look quite the same. But you know, I keep saying to you, this this is this happens in football. You can't be brilliant every week. I mean, you know, the city the city result was I just thought was staggering. I mean, Palace have done really really well, but kept drawing and drawing. But they look a completely different team and very much an in your face team, which, which is good. And for them, I mean, I'd hate to think what the price was for Palace to go and win at Man City 2-0 because I wish I would have had some of it. But it's just, it's the Premier League. And as I say, you know, the longer you're in it for, shall we say, smaller clubs, the better chance you have of, get, of getting a, a better team because you get more and more money. And w- w- that's the great thing about the Premier League. Yes, OK, the top four will always be the top four and, and you know, because they can just get the best players. But that level underneath, what you find now is is that you know you can go shopping there in terms of buying footballers, and you can get you can get a kind of not necessarily young but maybe early twenties player that you think can can train on, and I think Brighton have done that. It looks like Palace might have done that as well with one or two of their players, and it, it you know it just it increases the the potential of the team and it increases the fact that you know they can go to places now. And, and really hold their own and not just sit and park the bus as it was. Uh, Chelsea have had uh, a much kinder recent schedule than Liverpool, but is there any level of concern from a Liverpool perspective that you see someone like Keita going off injured at the weekend and Chelsea have also had injuries and yet they're killing teams, yet the next man up does seem to be as good as the person who's got injured in, in, a, in a lot of areas, that they just have depth, ridiculous depth in so many areas that, that Liverpool simply just don't have and they might be a little bit more of a victim to fortune than Chelsea would be over the course of a 38 game season No I think you're absolutely right mind you mind you, the last two Chelsea games are what Norwich at home and Newcastle away Yeah very course, kind fixtures Yeah which are win-wins um, No you're right um, and I think and we'll probably be talking about this all the season which will be they miss Wijnaldum um, and Manaldum, Wijnaldum, I think, misses them because obviously he's not in PSG's team. He's sat on his backside on the bench. So um, he was he was one of Klopp's favourite players because he did he carried everything out to the absolute letter of what, what he asked him to do in, in games. So they miss him. I mean, Cater, you know, what is in his fourth year now? He's kind of, we know he's a good player. Has he really shown as a good player over three or four months consistently? You'd argue no. Fabinho, obviously, they they miss Thiago. Unfortunately, coming towards the end of his career, just keeps getting knocks a bit like Matip as well, and 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 they're out for a while. And Curtis Jones is is obviously comes into play, and um, it's yeah, it's the way it's going to be. He's, he's he's said all along that he's he's going to have to kind of balance the squad throughout the season, and and you know take players out, and bring players in, and, and freshen it up that way, but. You know, with Liverpool is what what I like about them now is the fact that in terms of the transfer market, they decide who they're going to go and buy, and basically nobody really knows until they bought them. If you look at you know Van Dijk, Allison, Jota, um, there was no nobody knew anything about Jota, and even Van Dijk to to a certain degree, you know, because loads of clubs were chasing them, and bang, Liverpool just went in and got him. And we all thought, 75 million, wow, you're having a laugh. But obviously, you can double that now. So that's that's their thing. And I think because they didn't, well, they hardly did any business in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the earlier window. And I think January will probably, I won't say go to the Americans, that the Americans will already know, FSG will already know. And he goes, you might go, look, you know, if we're in this position, up with the the uh, the super league thing is they, they've always they've always backed him because as i tell you every time i'm on this program it is that you know they've got a sporting franchise and they know how it works you get injuries you get a loss of, a loss of form and you've got to keep you know improving the side
Yeah, absolutely. Just one thing to finish up on then, Mark, from yesterday's games, uh, West Ham United's win uh, against Aston Villa 4-1 and just some beautiful football. The final goal in particular, just great sense of unselfishness from Antonio then Lanzini for, for Bowen to tap into an empty net. Moyes has them playing brilliant football. Of course, Europe might be a little bit of a, a stumbling block over the next little while, but you have to make them a real contender for that fourth spot. No. No? Okay. No. Not no. having it. And I t- I'll, t- I'll tell him that to his face as well. No, I mean, listen to him yesterday after the game. He said, we can, we can still do a lot better. That's absolutely 100% the way that it is. I think the, the problem is, is that, and I think he's very much aware of this, if you lose Antonio, and Antonio has got, hasn't got the best hamstrings in the world. He has no. got two of them, but, but they're not the best. If, if, and it, he'll, have, he'll have two or three weeks out. But as Moisey said, the problem with that is he, he then needs another two or three weeks to get fit because he's such a big unit and he's such a good player. And he said, we've got nobody else like him. So, and they're in, listen, they're in every flipping competition, aren't they? Which he'll be, he's happy with, but he's, he'll be, and already he's thinking, crikey, come, come March time, we might, might have hardly any players, but they've done great. He's a good manager if you give him time. I mean, the Man United must look at him now and must think, oh my goodness, what, what a mistake we made. But um, that's a different story. Yeah, I mean, like, what what would have happened? What do you think would have happened had they just stuck with him for another couple of seasons? Just just re- re- respected the fact that he wasn't Alex Ferguson and that nobody was going to be Alex Ferguson and that things weren't going to be that good well, all the time. And also, if you really think about it, going back to Busby, going back to some to some at Busby, how many how many managers did they have until they they got somebody? So they'd already experienced the fact that you know he had this icon of a manager, and it's only always going to be very very difficult when somebody else comes in. Mo- Moisey builds teams. That's what he does. And I, and I know generally now in the Premier League, you, you don't get time to do that. And maybe at Manchester United, you definitely, the big clubs, you definitely don't get time to do it. But that's, that's you know, you don't even have to look at what he did at, at Preston when he started, but obviously at Everton. And he made them fortunes as well. Not that Man United would need to make fortunes in terms of selling players. He made Everton fortunes, absolute fortunes in the, the, some of the players that they bought cheaply and, and sold on. He's just a really good manager if, if you give him time and everyone thinks, you know, his dower is this, is not. I mean, away from the game, he, he so isn't. But he's, he's just a real, really, really good manager. And uh, the other thing as well that he always says about the people at, at West Ham is, is when, he, when he goes to ask for something, they very, very rarely say no. He said they've been great with him. It is mad that to think that, you know, like, uh, I think uh, Rice has spoken about this, how everyone is just so happy in training. And it's a complete antithesis, I guess, Laura, to how you would imagine from the outside Manchester United players probably it didn't look like anyone was you know they didn't look like they were enjoying themselves and to be fair I think he got the shortest time of any manager since um, Ferguson and it was mm. it was it, I think it's the one thing in football play, managers in general get sacked far too readily um, and it, I think we can all say with him that was the case here because his record yeah. either side of it is phenomenal yeah oh absolutely and you know, well, he always says about West Ham is that the signing of the two Czech Republic players has been massive for him because relatively they didn't cost that much money. He said, but they've been brilliant. He said, so he said, you go training and they stop behind straight away. And he said, sometimes you have to go out and say, look, that's enough. You know, don't do any more because you, you, you ruin your legs for the weekend. He said, but what's happened is there's a knock on effect. He said, then everybody's doing it. And he said, you know, sometimes in training when they turn up and you kind of, you know, and I've done it myself, we all done it, think, oh, I don't fancy training today. It's raining and it's this and it's whatever. He said, it's not like that. And he said, it's very, very, very competitive. And he said, you know, people like Rice, who's obviously a top, top player, but even, even the, you know, the, the, the senior pros as well that they have, said they've all bought into the fact that you've got to work really, really hard and then a little bit more and you'll get your rewards, and and that's exactly what they've got so far. But as also as he'll tell you, they they've won absolutely nothing yet. We're completely out of time, Mark. But in a word, who's going to get fourth place then if West Ham aren't in the race? Man United. Yeah, fair enough, Mark Lawrence, and thanks a million. Pleasure.